Chief Theater. Starring Tom Conway as Inspector Mark Saber of the Homicide Squad in the case of the Chamber of Death. And now, the case of the Chamber of Death. Hello? Hello! Is that for me? Well, yes, Mr. Smith, the same man. He's called several times today, but he refuses to leave his name. Is my daughter home? Yes, she came in about a half hour ago. Alone? No, Mr. Quayle drove her home. I thought so. Would you please tell her I'd like to see her? Yes. Here I am, Father. What do you want? I want to talk to you about Harvey Quayle. Haven't you talked enough about Harvey? Not nearly. He's a lazy, shiftless fortune hunter who only wants your money. That's not true. He'll work when he finds a job he likes. Uh-huh. And in the meantime, he'll continue to borrow money from you. How did you know that? From your bank statement. I was in the bank today. It's my money, and I can do what I want with it. As long as I control it, you'll do as I say. Either you'll stop giving him money, or I'll cut off your allowance. You wouldn't dare. And another thing. I found out he isn't even a citizen. He's a Canadian. It's, it's practically the same thing. Oh, no, it's not. I instituted suit this afternoon to bring him into court. I'm going to have him deported as an undesirable. Hello? Mr. Smith. Yes? Drop that lawsuit or you'll be a dead man in 48 hours. What's that? Remember, I said 48 hours. If you want to live. Hello? Hello? What is it? What's the matter? Someone just threatened to kill me if I don't drop that suit. You see, at first I was certain the threat came from this fellow Harvey Quayle. But on second thought, I'm not so sure. I have another lawsuit pending. Mm -hmm. Suppose you tell me about it. It's an infringement suit on a patented process I own. The firm of O'Connor and Wesson manufacture commercial chemicals. They've been using certain steps in my process for some time without paying me for them. Would they threaten you? Oh, they're reputable businessmen. But losing the case would cost them a lot of money. That's right. They've used every possible legal trick and device to delay the case. But now it's coming up and I'm certain to win. They know it. Do you know of anyone else who might threaten you? No one. I thought it might be a practical joke. But my daughter Irene is so upset, she made me come to you. You did the right thing. I'm going to provide you with protection for the next few days. Well, I've finished checking around downstairs, Mr. Smith. What do you say we have a look around outside before going upstairs? All right. Dad. Be careful. Don't worry, dear. I'm sure Mr. Riley will take excellent care of me. Hello? Harvey? Yes? Harvey, I'm frightened. Don't talk like a chump. Everything's going to be all right. But there's a policeman here. Well, who cares? Just do exactly as I told you to. Don't you think we should postpone it? No, I don't. You're going to go through with this, understand? I'll see you later. Harvey. Harvey! This is my bedroom. Now you've seen every room in the house. Mm-hmm. Why does your daughter sleep downstairs? I'm a light sleeper, and she doesn't like to disturb me when she comes in late. I see. Well, I guess everything's okay. Get a good night's sleep. I'll be outside in the hall. Good night. Good night.
I don't think we should do this. Oh, you're not going to back out on me now. But I'm afraid. Oh, cut that out. I made all the plans and everything will go off like clockwork. Now get a grip on yourself and let's go. <laughs> Mr. Smith, it's 7.30. Homicide. All the killer had to do was to drop the cyanide pellets in the acid, work the bellows, and poor old Smith was a dead pigeon. Just like in the death chamber. What time did the daughter leave? Riley doesn't know. He didn't hear a thing. After he phoned, he went to wake her up and she was gone. She and her boyfriend probably knocked the old man off for his money. I'd hate to think that, Tim. Otto Smith was very good to his daughter. Well, what's our next move? Sergeant, bring them in. Mr. Wesson, Mr. O'Connor. How do you do, gentlemen? Hello. I'm sorry we kept you waiting. Won't you sit down? Thank you. This concerns Otto Smith. I understand his suit against your firm is finally coming to trial day after tomorrow. That's correct. I also understand that he's practically certain to win, and you two will have to pay him a very large sum of money. Our private affairs are no concern of the police department, and none of your business. They weren't until this morning. But the murder of Otto Smith makes it a different picture. Otto Smith? Murdered? When? Who did it? He was killed last night by cyanide gas. Do either of you know of anyone who might want to murder him? Well, I can't think of a soul, no. I can't imagine. Do you know if he had any enemies? Well, not to my knowledge, no. No. Do you know his daughter, Irene Smith? I never met her myself. I haven't either. Well, can't either of you give us any kind of a lead that might help? I'm sorry. Well, thanks for coming in. If we need you, we'll call you. This way, gentlemen. I want to know where both of those two have been for the past 24 hours. Check on it, will you? Okay. <laughs> Inspector. Come in. Sit down, won't you? 
I hope you've brought me some information. Saber, I may be making a mistake in coming here, but murder's a terrible thing. I agree with you about that. I do know someone who might have a motive in killing Smith. Oh? Who is it? A man who's been spending a great deal on a process for improving motor fuel. How does this tie in with Smith? I don't think the process is worthwhile, and I've said so time and again. But against my advice, this man continues to pour money into the idea. You seem to know a lot about this deal. I'm as loyal as the next man and as ethical, but I won't condone murder. And if you and your partner had to pay the judgment, which Smith would have won, this certain man wouldn't have any more money to put in the process. Is that it? That's it. And this man's name? It's my partner, George Wesson. We'll return to Mystery Theater in just a moment. And now, back to Mystery Theater. Uh, gentlemen, I'm sorry I'm a little late. I was down in the lab. That's all right. I understand you've been working on a chemical process of some sort. I certainly have. I've been working on it for over a year. That's very interesting. Has it been costly? There's no question about that. I've had to mortgage my house and borrow on my insurance. But I think it's going to be worth it. Where is this laboratory of yours? In the basement. Professor Michaels, the inventor, practically lives down there. May we take a look at it? Why, I suppose so. Michaels doesn't usually like visitors, but I'm sure it'll be all right. It's down this way. Here we are. Professor Michaels, I want you to meet Inspector Saber and Sergeant Maloney. How do you do, Inspector? How do you do, Professor? How I understand you've developed a new fuel process. That's true. Soon we will have big news to announce. Hey, Mr. Wesson. I hope so. How far along are you? <laughs> or is that a secret? No secret, Inspector. You just keep working and experimenting. And, and one day, poof, you have it. I've been working a long time, and I think Soon I have it. We're very close to it. I think in another month we'll be ready to make some field tests. Hmm. Mr. Maloney? Huh? I would be very careful around those containers. Why? Most of them contain caustic acids or corrosive powders. You might, might burn your fingers. Do you have to forgive him? He's incurably curious. So am I. Uh, by the way, Mr. Saber, what are you inspecting? Both of these men are with the police department. Police? Don't worry, Professor. This is just a friendly visit. My good. I was afraid you had put a tag on my car. Oh, no, nothing like that. <laughs> it was nice meeting you, Professor. I wish you luck in your search. Thank you. Come along, Sergeant. Thank you. Mr. Weston, will you come back down later? I want to talk to you. Right away. Here's a report on O'Connor and Wesson. Mm-hmm. Wesson seems to be accounted for. With O'Connor, there's a gap between 2 and 4 a.m. Want me to bring him in? No, not yet. What about Irene Smith? Nothing. She dropped completely out of sight. And Quail? Same. Oh, sometimes I wish I wasn't a cop. What's wrong with being a cop? Just for once, I'd like to be chasing someone besides a murderer. But I need is some rest. I'm going home. What you need is a nice wife at home. Say, Maggie's big sister's in town. I'll be glad to make a date for you. I'll stick to dating killers. Put away your bow and arrows, Cupid. Can't you be reasonable? Wait a minute. Listen to me, will you? She's got black hair and blue eyes and a complexion like peaches and cream. Yes, but you said she was Maggie's big sister. How much does she weigh? Oh, well, she is a little on the plump side. That's what I thought. Good night, Tim. Oh, choosy, huh? Looking for someone? Well, Harvey Quayle. We've been looking for you. I didn't have anything to do with Smith's murder. Where's Irene? She didn't have anything to do with it either. Then you won't mind answering a few questions. Oh, why don't you lay off? Put your cops out of my hair or else. Just a minute.
Mr. Quayle. Inspector, I'm, I'm awfully sorry about tonight. I was a little upset. You must have been. And I imagine this is Miss Irene Smith. Come in. Mr. Saber, I know it's very late, but after Harvey told me about meeting you this evening, I just had to talk to you. I'm very glad you came. Won't you sit down? I didn't learn of my father's death until today. Harvey and I were out of town. I, I, we didn't get back until today. I know. I was trying to find you. Is it true that Daddy was murdered? <laughs> yes. It was carefully planned and very skillfully executed. But who? Who would do such a thing? That's a question I'm hoping you'll help to answer. I'll do anything I can. What time did you leave your father's house, the night of his death? A little before midnight. Where'd you go? We drove to Las Vegas and got married. Here's the marriage certificate. Did your father have any enemies? No. Everyone liked him. When you left, did you hear anything unusual, either inside or outside the house? No. What can I do to help you? Can you be at my office first thing in the morning? We'll be there. Saber. Listen, my bedroom's full of cyanide gas. Yes, that's what I said, cyanide gas. <coughs> now, get a decontamination squad over here right away. Okay. <coughs> Hello, Maggie. Let me talk to Tim, please. Now, now listen, Maggie, this is Mark Saber. I just want to talk to Tim. Hello, Tim. Meet me at the Wesson house as quickly as you can. Why? Because I think we can break the Smith murder case if we act soon enough. Okay. someplace else. No, this would be the place. Now, come on, start looking for it. I guess I must have been wrong. Look at this. What? That's it. Cyanide? Looks like eggs. That's the way it comes. Deadly cyanide eggs. Come on. It's locked. Quick, out of the window. Ah, 
there's a metal cover over this window. We're trapped. In a minute or two, cyanide gas will be pumped in here. Come on, Tim, grab some of those rags. Give me a hand. We've got to block every opening. I sure hope so. Well, Mastermind, what do we do now? Wait. Whoever tried to kill us has to get rid of our bodies. So we sit here and make like a couple of corpses? Right. If it isn't asking too much, who is going to open that door? It can be any one of five people. We don't know in a little while. Sign that pellet, huh? Well, I've got a little lead pellet for him. I thought so. Why did you kill Smith? Money. You mean if Weston had to pay his share of the judgment, there'd be no more money for your experiments? Yes. My life's work. I'm so close to success. You better call an ambulance. Okay. Am I going to die? No, you're not going to die. You're going to live long enough to taste some of your own medicine. Cyanide gas. It costs more to travel the nation's great superhighways, but it's well worth it. Just look at these cars zoom along the great New Jersey Turnpike. No doubt about it, you get more speed and greater comfort, too, when you travel the great deluxe highways. In other things, too, like this Mole Deluxe Brushless Lather, real quality pays off in better shades. Yes, men, when it comes to your face, it pays to use the finest product of its kind, Mole Deluxe. Deluxe quality always costs more, but it's well worth it. Mole Deluxe is so much faster, so much richer, so much smoother, you'll say, here's shaving comfort fit for a king. We're so sure Mole will please you that we guarantee it to give you not just a good shave, but the best shave you've ever had, or you get back your full purchase price. So get Mole Deluxe today for the closest, smoothest, most comfortable shave in your life. It's king size, fit for a king. again next week for another exciting adventure with Inspector Mark Saber of the Homicide Squad. Mm -hmm.